first of all, could you talk to me about your early life in Jamaica and about your journey to Britain? What was that like? Oh, it was quite exciting for me as a young person. And of course, um, Britain was so important to us, um, Caribbean people. And um, they were, for us, we need to get out of the Caribbean to Britain. Um, and, um, and that was so important when you said, oh, well, I'm going to, I'm going to London. Wow, you're going to London? Yep, I'm going to London I'm, re I'm Wednesday. But we have some sort of funny um, things or ideas that you're not allowed to tell anybody where you're going because the ghost will stop you. <laughs> you will not be able to, um, to continue. So we were told not to tell anybody because the ghost and what we call the obya man will obya you and you will not be able to be successful. So, you know, it had to be uh, a whisper. Like, do you know it's tomorrow you're going to London? Make sure you don't tell anybody. Say, what do you mean anybody? No, 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 you mustn't tell because they will help you and stop you from going. <laughs> so those are all the, some of the things that happened to me <laughs> when, when, you know, when I was coming, you know, my parents, um, you know, left me uh, in Jamaica with my grandmother. And uh, my grandmother was really lovely, you know, she was really a lovely woman, she liked us, everything, nobody, we couldn't do anything wrong. <laughs> Whatever we are doing and we do something wrong, she will blame the other person, you know, and, and, and that's what um, happened in arriving uh, in, in London. And when you arrived in Britain, did it meet your expectations? Oh, it was far... Not, not really, not really. I mean, there was hopes and things there and people, you know, but not what we expected because it was supposed to be milk and honey and everything you want in life is there. But that wasn't the case. Um, it wasn't the case indeed. And um, even the, the, the houses, it was, it was cold, you know, you know, even the language was a problem. Me. You know, so it was it was quite you know, quite a experience for me, and I, I learned a great deal. I wanted to ask you, how did you get involved in the fight against racism? Oh, I think that must have been my experience in Jamaica. To some extent, that we were told that we are proper human being and we have. You know, we are part of the society here in Britain and, you know, and we need to have our share of whatever there is. So, so we were determined and we weren't like, you know, tiptoeing, you know, moving very slowly and being submissive. We, we were not that. I was not that anyway. And, um, and that's how I think the, the Black Panther, you know, started I invite we were invited there because we believe that you know we didn't get what we're supposed to get you know um to other country and other people you know we weren't treated properly you know so so that's how that's how it started and what role did photography play in promoting the Black Panther movement and its objectives well um what happened I mean the, the, they, the Black Panther, they were gathering, and of course, because I'm a photographer, I have a camera, they were now asking me to document all the, you know, the meetings and, and people that were involved and, and so forth, which was a really, really big uh, responsibility. And we, we also um, produced that sort of stuff to help with the promotion uh, uh, to, to protect um the people to protect the people uh in the black panthers because they wouldn't be able to 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 arrest you or beat you or do bad things to you or take you to court you know and uh, so the camera was there to protect and that's what i was doing 
I was protecting the Black Panthers and all the members of the thing because we will now go to the court and say, look, this is what happened. And you can see that it's a trump up charge. It's not a proper, you know, um, situation that should, yeah, should have happened or something. Yeah. And what did Black Power mean to you? It means a great deal because I, we didn't have a say in society. We, didn't have a, we did not have a say in anything. And of course, there's another thing where our own parents were also afraid to open up the doors and to, 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 to campaign, or to say, no, this is wrong. Or, you know, we have to have our own share. You know, we as black people must have our own share. So all that was sort of building around, you know. But we as a black Panther believe that, you know, enough is enough. We must be part of Britain. We must get what our fair share is. We must have our children in school. You know, we must have our own houses and property. We have to, you know, it must be open to us because we have contributed. You know, we made this country what it is through slavery and other things. You know, without that, we wouldn't have what we have today. You know. And when we look at uh, the Race Today Collective, when we look at black supplementary schools and all the other activity that was going on at the time, mm -hmm. what was the importance of that community education? Well, they, 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 the community believed that they would have to educate their children properly because the society by itself were not interested in us. I mean, the whole idea was that it was a temporary you know, we were just coming here as a temporary situation. Maybe that's how the British working class, uh, our middle class, they believe. But we didn't believe that. We didn't believe we we're coming here as a temporary, you know, two, three, four years and go back to the Caribbean. That was never what we, we thought. We, we were there thinking to develop a uh, situation, creating a family, getting involved in education, and, and things like that. That's what we were, we were coming for. Obviously, the weather wasn't good, you know, but, but you know, we decided to stay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And what did you think about the racial and political climate in the 1970s? Well, obviously, we were campaigning against racism and we were demanding that we have our full share and that we have, you know, we are part of this society. We were just on the edge of society. They weren't, they didn't see us as anybody important. So we had to push our way and explain, you know, that we are now part of Britain and we're not going anywhere. We are staying here. We will, we will go when we want to go, but we are now part of this society. They came in and ravished our country, you know, hang a lot of people, do all sorts of negativity, you know, and they expected us just to disappear. Not going to work. Just not going to work. You know, all the wars, all the wars that happened, our people were there. You know, first world war, second world war, whatever. We are always there fighting and supporting Britain. But they don't acknowledge those things. And what differentiated the racism in America versus the racism in the UK? Well, as, so, as soon as you were saying that, I think of one thing, guns. In America, they have guns. We don't have guns. So um, the American will quickly use their gun. In fact, even my father, when he was, um, was helping out the war effort you know, in America, you know, he foolishly went into a... Uh, uh, a store or somewhere and he asked for a drink, a cup of tea. And then the man said to him, you know, wait a minute, wait a minute. And he came back out with his gun and pointed at my dad to shoot him because he had the audacity to ask for a drink in that sort of environment in America in those days. So my dad just ran away. And then a policeman saw him and said, boy, what are you doing? Well, sir, I was trying to get a cup of tea and the man took his gun out and wanted to shoot me. 
He said, we go back to this uh, cafe. So he took my dad back to the cafe and, um, and said, give this man his, his food and his drink. And my father, and my father started to eat food and pushing it in more quickly and other. And then the man came back again and said, look, make sure he eats it. And that's how, that's how my father get away. And my father said, he will never go to America in his life again. And believe me, he never actually went to America. He said, I'm never going to go there in my entire life. And, and that's what happened. And if we shift our conversation to the Mangrove Nine trial, yes. could you talk to me about the significance of that trial? Um, yes, it's a significant one. Um, Mangrove Nine, we, there was a situation where female, you know, were the one marching around. I don't know if you've ever seen any of those images where the women there was marching around because um, the, 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 Panthers, the, the Panthers believed that as, as women that the police would not attack the, the, you know, that situation, which, which didn't happen. So it wasn't, it wasn't that easy to do that, but all if you look at the the thing you will see you if you look at the the trial or the way the judge was working it was my images was very important because they used my image to tell the story and to make sure that that's how people like darkos and other didn't actually end up in jail because the images that i took showed the judge that it was not true and impossible to do what they claim that people like Darkos and all the others was, was getting through that they, they check it that way. So that's that's some of the most important thing that happens. And you mentioned there about Darkos uh, representing himself. Yes. What was the importance of two of the members of the group representing themselves? Yeah. Well, I remember I was there clearly, Darkos, you know, defend himself in the court and he was extremely good. But had, had we lost that case, people would have been in jail for like 20 years because they wanted to deal with us, but it didn't work. And when you look at the way that the Black Panther movement is remembered today, do you believe that the Black Panthers get the recognition and credit that they deserve? I think the Black Panthers are happy with what they they achieve because they if we were protected before that we you know we were like in serious trouble police would just do whatever but you know so we you know we did it and we're doing it for for the community so people could understand you know so we could be strong we could be determined we weren't afraid of anybody like before people was afraid of I mean, our parents were very afraid be careful boy when you're going there don't make trouble you know so you know we were quite lucky you know to have that sort of experience and we didn't end up in in court i mean those court they were like a big sentence they were going to do a fray is a big big sentence and they managed to um be successful and didn't go to the court. And if we move on to looking at what's happening today with uh, police brutality in America, what is your reaction to what's going on in America and the movement that is happening now? What they're doing is right. I was, in, I was on that march, you know? I was there most of the day. We walked all the way from right across London, you know, uh, up to Trafalgar Square all around. I documented that, I photographed all of that stuff, which I will eventually, eventually release it in some days or somewhere. But yes, I've, I've been always um, doing those things. And, um, and they're always um, been truthful. And finally, what is your advice to today's generation of anti-racist activists? Uh, anti-racist activists. I would have thought that you have to have a, 
a level where you have to know what you want and you've got to um, be proud of yourself and the, the system here is extremely difficult for young people to understand. But you just have to be upright and strong and determined. Um, it sounds easy, but it's not. Um, yeah, it's difficult. Um, I suppose one may need, need to, people need to read some books like um, C.L.R. James and other things about uh, how people we are treated and all that. There's so many books there that's available now. In our case, it wasn't there. You know, so I think people need to look. Uh, I, I know life is a bit different now in Britain than in those days, but um, there is still a lot of work to be done. Obviously, we need our people to be better, to be, you know, to be better, for the, better education need to be, you know, to create, but we, we're still not there. You know, we haven't got the professional that we should have, you know. So there's a lot of work to be done for our young people. Neil Kenlock, thank you for joining me on Telefriend.